Hi, everybody. I'm Gene Simmons, and you're not. And you are listening to the number one KISS podcast, Shout It Out Loudcast, with Tom and Zeus. But you knew that. Now get out of here. Oh, boy. Here we go. Pressing the button. Star Broker Simmons. Star? Is that what he does? Stop shouting. I need Ace He's not what you would call a handsome man. Oh, no. Here come the kiss time. Is that a positive thing? Okay. All right. I'm going to grab me a nice cold mellow out Why? Why do that to the fan? Stop it. Why? Because the fuck? You do? Hey, fuck do you like this? Settle down. Yo! Hey, what's up there, Kiss Army? Tom and Susan, another episode of Shout It Out Loudcast, episode 240. Sonic Boom. Yep. Album review time, Tom. Oh, happy for album review. I don't know if I'm happy for the album. We'll, we'll find out. We'll find out soon. Well, we're doing an album review. Yes, which and, are always uh, fun. We didn't plan this to come out this way, but we have a shit ton of uh, feedback. We're not going to go through everything. No, 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 no. But uh, our episode with D. Snyder actually went viral and it blew up. Uh, and for the least uh, reason we expected, not because of his kiss comments, but because of his set list and Metallica comments. Anyway, Tom, we did a poll last week on yep. the D Snyder interview. Uh, what was that on? Yeah, we did a poll that D retweeted and commented on. Uh, so, of course, kind of like our recent dorm damage episode, it was about the set list and stuff and talking about deep cuts and et cetera. So the, the poll question this week was simple. It said, should bands stick to the hits only? The options were, yes, that's what fans want. No, play some deep cuts. D retweeted us and wasn't really happy with the phrasing of the poll. <laughs> but I told him, I said, regardless of what how we phrased it, people are going to anytime fans see the words deep cuts, they're like, oh, I got to do deep cuts. So, of course, 84% of the people voting want deep cuts, which, of course, the other 16%, I don't know what you guys are smoking here, but that's okay. Our buddy Heavy Mayo, we love that guy, huh? Depends on how big of a fan you are. I saw Springsteen once, didn't know a single song for three hours, and I responded by saying, that's your own fault for seeing that bozo. Yeah, please, Springsteen. (laughs) Our buddy Brad Baird, hey, in Kiss's case... Let's change it up every 20 years or so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's true. That's the issue. Brett Roscoe also depends on your idea of a deep cut. Some asking for Parasite or King of the Nighttime World, but for me, they don't feel like deep cuts, mainly due to their presence on Alive 1 and 2. Something like All's, All Hell's Breaking Loose, Thief of the Night, Who Wants to Be Lonely, Naked City. Yeah, we talked about that, about what 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 is a deep cut, because to me and you, it's not what it is to somebody else. He's absolutely right. King of the yeah. Nighttime World. Parasite are not fucking deep cuts. No, they've and they did play played. Parasite. They played they've, Parasite. Yeah, but they've been played in the last 20 years. Right, right. At least. I'm talking right. about songs that haven't been played at all. Right. John Gross, I would prefer some deep cuts, but I also get D's point that I'm in the minority at the show, and most fans of the Eddie Hit of the songs on the radio. I've seen the Exodus firsthand. I remember I saw Def Leppard early on in the Hysteria tour. People sat for the high and dry stuff. Honestly, John, that doesn't surprise me. Because let's be serious, the people that like Hysteria are sometimes the people that do not like High and Dry, okay? It's two different bands, two different albums, so that doesn't surprise me. They're probably like, oh, what's this loud, aggressive music from High and Dry? I want to hear Don't Shoot Shotgun. (laughs) Okay. Gerald Rosenberg, not Saul. There can be a happy medium. Aerosmith's latest set list seems to cater to both casual and diehard fans. Yeah, we did talk about that a little bit on Dorm Damage. Also, I think you'd really have to be a diehard who is familiar with the entire catalog if you're willing to spend a ridiculous amount that tickets cost now. Well, maybe that'll be an episode in the future, too, about tickets. But uh, I get your point there, Gerald. And again, the feedback was just outstanding, over the top. People love D as they should. The interview was over the off the charts. Incredible. 
Uh, Twisted Kister says, great episode. D and Twisted Sister have been in my life since 1985, the first band I call my own. His book, Frats, is really good. Makes me glad I've been done with high school for a while and extra glad I didn't go to the high school in the book. Great down-to-earth conversation. Yeah, the book um, has gotten rave reviews, uh, so I would definitely check that out for sure. Metal Old Guy, we haven't heard from him in a while. Wow. My two favorite bands, Kiss and Twisted Sister. Love the questions. This is why you guys are the best Kiss podcast out there. It's not even close. I watched another podcast recently who had Bruce Kulik on, and they asked him what his favorite snack is at the movies. Holy shit, what a waste. Wow. Okay. Well, we'll keep that to, we'll keep that to the side, apparently. I'm not even, I'm not even touching that, but. Our buddy Wes Beach, who also sent us a fantastic lengthy email. We love Wes's emails and his comments. A fellow opinionated Long Islander. I go way back with him and saw him in his pre-Twisted Sister band Harlequin, which is a prog rock cover band. I also saw the original Twisted Sister, which was a glam rock cover band. Yes, Wes, we know you go way back with him, so uh, thank you for that. Uh, we could go on and on. We got a ton of great stuff. You guys really, really made this episode explode, and we're so appreciative for that. But that's what we got for Twitter. Over on the Book of Face, Keith Rochford. Hell yeah! D fucking Snyder giving his opinions. Like him or not, he stands by his convictions. Congratulations on another top-tier episode. Shout it out loud, Cast will always reign as number one. Paul Heider. Thank you. So... Tom and Zeus and D. Snyder, question mark, question mark, exclamation point, exclamation, uh, together, question mark, exclamation, talking about kiss, question mark, exclamation, mind blown. Our friends over at Pot of Thunder, great get, guys. Polarized people are almost most, are always the most interesting. And make no mistake, D. did the Lord's work on Capitol Hill way back when helping to expose the idiots in charge of this country for being clueless fools that they were. Yeah, the PRM and C, whatever the fuck it was called. Yep. And Dipper Gore and her fat ass. Ooh, she got a fat ass. Somebody named Amanda Campbell puts a car photo of her and says, Hi, good morning, y'all. I'm Amanda Campbell, and I would love to make more friends on here and feel free to say hi. I've seen that. <laughs> I've seen that. <laughs> I cannot believe none of the loudcasters are like, hi, my name is so-and-so. Do you like Kiss? <laughs> oh. Look, honey, nerds. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, man. Dan Hool. I don't know if he's one of the Dan Hool, the mutant from we Stone already, Hill. I, th- I think he already confirmed that that's not the mutant, Dan. Dude, but I don't he, believe it. He looked like the creature that came out of hot old stomach in fucking total recall. He looked like the child of the Toxic Avenger. <laughs> Dude, the Toxic Avenger. Do you remember who was that kid's name? Joe. Joe, Joe DeRove. That's it. Matter of fact. See, I, I, I just, I hope that 30 years later these people aren't listening. <laughs> Dude. The fact that he said he looked like the Toxic Avenger, and when you looked at the cover, you're like, "Holy shit, I can see it!" By the way, any by the way, any Toxic Avenger fans out there, they're remaking that movie. (laughs) (laughs) One of the Stone Hill kids looked like the Toxic Avenger. His face. (laughs) What the fuck? Fucking mad early. That kid was fucking classic. He was. He was fucking. He went to high school with me. I grew up with him and stuff. He's fucking Fucking out of his mind. Ridiculously funny kid. Uh, I mean, we have so much comments here. I'm going to go over to Loudcasters because I could be on this all day. And that has probably more comments. Yeah. I always like to give a shout out to Gary Cap because he's the man. We love Gary. That's awesome. Yeah. Scott Wheeler. Top contributor, Tom, says. Oh, wow. Uh, Wow, D. Snyder, it won't be long before you move into radio and TV. You're getting too big for podcasts. Size-wise? That's what we're going to, that's the goal. We're going to take over fucking everything. We're auditioning for a serious XM show. We're going to push Eddie out. That's it. We're taking over. Maybe so. Uh, Jack Pinocchio 
D fucking Snyder. Unbelievable, guys. This is up there with your guest interviews. Like him or not, D speaks the truth, and this is why I like him. It's great to hear from another front man, especially about set lists, saying the majority of fans going to see the are there for the hits. It's never occurred to me that there really is a low percentage of fans who want to hear deep cut songs, and you will have half the crowd go to the bathroom during that time. D really put that in perspective. Great job, guys. Spider Man hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, Jack, you're absolutely right. I've never heard that side of it, and it really put things in perspective for me. I didn't even think about it that way. And, uh, yeah, it was interesting to hear D say that. Yep. Very cool. Our buddy, Sean DeHaan. Sean, we hope you're doing well. Yes, Sean. Um, he's a big fan of Al A. Knight, Tom. That's the wrestler guy. Okay. And he did the uh, catchphrase, let me talk to you. Awesome interview, chat boys. I will always make time to listen to a D. Snyder. Uh, he's very intelligent, well-spoken, definitely knows his stuff. He is easily the best frontman in hard rock heavy metal Ooh. and brings that level of excellence to his interviews. Ooh. If you doubt this, watch a show on YouTube from the club days till the end. Paul pales in comparison. Wow. I had to read this from Sean. You guys are on quite a streak of excellent guests. Yeah, and Zeus, excellent LA night mentioned. He's easily the most popular person in wrestling currently. One of my favorites. Yeah. But uh, there's another guy <laughs> that we listen to. Uh, is a friend of the show. We have to say he's the best right now. All right. La Champion Chris Jericho. Over on Instagram, Tom. Uh, Tui Liam. Awesome episode. Up there amongst your best. Stay Hungry is an iconic album. D's enthusiasm for music is always infectious to hear. Definitely one of your strongest guests yet. And I found his critique of Tommy Thayer to be interesting. And I agree, not to beat a dead horse, but Tommy is such a great player. Why have him copy Ace when he has so much to offer on his own? Let him bring his own tricks to the Kiss songs and solos. He has too much talent not to let him get creative. Listen, I'm with you on that. I, I think uh, uh, Tommy is, uh, uh, well, you'll hear it when I when we talk about this album coming up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our buddy John Restagno. D Snight is one of the greatest frontmen in rock. Killer episode, boys. D at the PMRC may be one of the greatest moments in rock history on protecting artists' rights. Tipper Gore is still having nightmares about the filthy 15. P.S. Thanks for reading my question last week, Mr. Antonio 2005. Yes. And let's go over to our YouTube page. Our girlfriend, Glam Rock Bandit. I wish you guys could have seen my face seeing the title of this episode. No way. They didn't. There's no fucking way. Was all I could say is I turned this episode on and just as expected, this was such a fun episode. You guys bounce off of D so amazingly here. I was smiling and laughing the whole time. I absolutely understand what D said about having commonality with musicians you look up to, especially given how I focus on that aspect of my favorite musicians through my life, whether it's someone like Ace Frehley being into sci-fi <laughs> and space like I am, or more recently examples like Kane Roberts and being into <laughs> art and video games that I am. It adds so much to the experience of being a fan of these musicians. While I disagree with Dee's dislike towards Tommy Thayer and Eric Singer wearing the Spaceman and Cat makeup, Despite me technically being a younger fan, I grew up watching, especially because as an artist, I can't help but wonder what concepts for new makeup designs for Tommy and Eric would look like. Perhaps I should try my hand at it, actually. Uh, all in all, these interview episodes are among my favorites because it gives me not only facts to enjoy, but it gives me new viewpoints to consider. And seriously, thank you guys for the birthday wishes. My 22nd birthday kicked ass, and I really appreciate the kind words, Tom and Zeus. Nice. Awesome. Guys, as a 22-year-old female listener, do not attack and swarm on her, please. All you fucking kiss slobs. Come on. Yeah, we might have to hire, like, SIOL security for our female <laughs> listeners. What the <laughs> fuck is SIOL security? Uh, I don't know. Now hiring. Click on a link on our website. <laughs> There's no tough guys that listen to us. No, there aren't. 
As much as she loved the episode, there's a guy named Guitar Gods Unite. He writes, ugh, interview episodes. <laughs> oh, sorry. We're not ranking the best fucking ace solos. <laughs> Tom, it looks like we have another one of our Shout It Out Loudcaster program directors here. <laughs> yeah, that's not an available position. We're not hiring for that right now. The program directors, they come out of the woodwork. Yes. About the funk. Great job, guys. Kudos for giving D props regarding his work for the station house victims and families. He deserves it. And you yes. guys should look into seeing if anybody can help them out. There's, I'm sure there's plenty of stuff people can still do for them. And, oh, yeah. Uh, D Snyder was amazing during that. So, mm-hmm. Tom, I turn it over to you. All right, let's fly through a couple emails here. Matt Johnson. Hey, Tom and Zeus. Just want to say I've been a fan for ages, a big fan of D's as well. Just want to say thank you so much for this episode. After having a truly miserable time, to open my podcast feed and see this made me smile. And after listening to the episode, was able to turn me around and bring me out of a funk. I just wanted to say thank you and let you guys know that the show sometimes truly does make a difference in people's lives. Out here slinging webs and looking for a shed. (laughs) Nice. We'll we'll get to that. Nice to hear that, Matt. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kendall Lacey, he always sends us great emails. I mean, the guy's a writer, so he loves to write, and he sends us awesome emails. Uh, So, Kendall, thank you for that email. Mike H., always love hearing from Mike H., sent us a couple nice emails. Uh, Todd Hughes, hey, Zeus and Chief. (laughs) Your long time from the very beginning listener, Todd, here again. Just finished the D. Snyder episode, awesome discussion, and something he said made me wonder. When you were discussing his reconciling with his band and having a reunion, he made the comment about basically getting over the past and making it happen. I got the feeling he really felt good about the fact that they were able to come back together and felt at peace with it. As Kiss continues to age, we all know that one will probably pass on sooner than any of us will want. Yeah, I think we can predict which one. Uh, Anyways... Do you think it will take the loss of one of the original four to finally make it sink in how stupid they all have become with their refusal to reconcile and come together one last time, even if it was just for one song in their original makeup? Who will regret not making it happen and honoring how special it is when the original four created? Thanks, as always, for your effort and passion, and keep the Kiss Army rocking. Great question. I don't know, Todd. Who knows? Our buddy Nicola Cassieri. What a great conversation with D. Snyder on this week's episode. D. has never been shy with his words, going all the way back to the PMRC Senate hearing speech, and he proved it with you guys. I can only imagine what it was like in those early years with Twisted Sister playing out on Long Island and Kiss in the City. What a time for rock music. I was born and have spent my life in Rhode Island. I remember the night of the station nightclub fire. I was out that night with some friends. My wife heard about the fire and knew I was out but had no idea where I was. I had been to the station for several shows, and although I wasn't there that night, I could easily have been. I will always respect D for what, ha- what he helped do in the aftermath. And a small personal kiss connection around 85, 86, when I was 14 years old, after Twisted Sister had monster hits with We're Not Gonna Take It and I Wanna Rock, but before Ace returned with Freely's Comet, I believed that J.J. French was actually Ace Freely. J.J. had long hair, and between his sunglasses and makeup, you could never get a clear look at his face. I believe Ace changed his name so people wouldn't know it was him. Then he puts up two pictures, and I could definitely see the resemblance. Entertaining show, as always. Will you be headed down for Kiss Cancer Goodbye? I got my ticket as soon as they went on sale. Nick, thank you so much for the email. Appreciate it. Great stuff. Unfortunately, we will not be going to that uh, really awesome event down in Florida. We, We apologize for our absence. And our buddies over at Ugly American Werewolf in London, we love those guys. Please check them out. We've been on uh, their show, and it's those guys are fantastic. So check them out. Uh, He sends us an email. Boys, congrats on the D. Snyder Show. It got picked up on some big sites. It must be given a boost to your already killer numbers. Zeus mentioned Santa Marin of Finland on the D. Snyder Show. You know she and Britney Spears are both getting divorced. I think it's time we connected Zeus and Tom with their true loves. Or maybe we can create a podcaster celebrity crush reality dating show with you two, Brittany and Santa. I feel like this is the opportunity you're looking for to grow the SIOL empire into reality television and a chance for those two ladies to find the real men of their dreams. Happy to serve as an executive producer and sell it into syndication. I'll keep killing it. Mac from Ugly America. Mac, we love you, buddy. And that we believe in dreams coming true, but not those kinds of dreams. Dude, 
I would explode in 15 seconds. Wait, what am I even saying? 15, 15 seconds? seconds? <laughs> yeah, what? The idea of that <laughs> happening would make me, I, I would burst into flames. Two pump chump. Two and pump chump, dude. I, I wouldn't even get my friggin' <laughs> cargo shorts unzipped <laughs> for that. Forget it. By the way, I don't oh. wear cargo shorts anymore. <laughs> uh, I don't shine shoes anymore. <laughs> go get your fucking shine box. Go get your cargo yeah, shorts. Go get your cargo shorts and your Crocs. Oh, she is so gorgeous. Ugh. I want to talk to you about the geopolitical threats in the United Nations world. Oh, please. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. They call you Zeus. Oh, did you just toot? Oh, it's so sexy when you break wind in front of me. Sorry, baby. I didn't know who's your turn. <laughs> All right. Let's wrap up feedback from with an email from one of our favorites, fellow New Hampshire Patreon buddy, the great AJ White. Such a great episode, guys. D is so smart and such a straight shooter. I think hair metal is a derogatory term, but that's just my opinion. Although I don't always agree with him, at least he is no holds barred. Something not many people mention is the nostalgia on your show, which is one of the main reasons I listen. At least two or three times an episode, I'm brought back in time and smiling. Your obvious long-term friendship makes me think of my lifelong friends constantly, and I cannot thank you enough. Perhaps this seems random to you, but holy fuck, it's a fact. I think at some point, every one of us wants to go back in time, and you take me there weekly, even if it's only a stupid random comment or a memory you mention. Thanks, guys. Keep up the great work. AJ White, New Hampshire. AJ, man, we love you, buddy. All your support over the years, especially hanging out with uh, with us at the beginning of the year, the Winery Dog Show. Great time. Uh, AJ, you are the comment of the week. Good answer. Good answer. I like the way you think. I'm going to be watching you. <laughs> Yeah, AJ, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And Tom, you had me thinking the whole time. I'm like, how do I get this joke in? Bloop, 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 bloop. <gasps> how dare you break wind before me? Ooh. Sorry, baby. I didn't know it was your turn. <laughs> oh, well, I see they call you Zeus. Okay. <laughs> bloop, 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 bloop. We talk about Sonic Boom. Bloop, bloop, bloop. And that's just, that's just the thing, Tom. I'm going to ruin it for you. What would you do if Britney was like all hot and like that? And then she's like, oh, hold on a second. I got a sonic boom coming out. Of it. Oh, I would, I would, I would put it in a bottle and save it. And she lives her life. Oh, I would love it. I, and anything, and I, uh, I would love it. I would love it. Just let's one. There is, there, there is nothing she could do that could ever oh, no. ruin the moment. If she nothing. her leg and goes, I wouldn't even care. <laughs> wouldn't even care. I've got chronic sonic booms, Tom. <laughs> one, one, one thing most of you don't know. I have irritable bowel syndrome. Is, is that a problem? Oops, I did it again. <laughs> Oh, let me take these underwear off of you with my teeth. No! <laughs> Fucking log just falls down. Oh, Jesus. How do we go? <laughs> Why do you have to ruin everything? This episode's good. This episode's bad enough having to talk about Sonic because Boom. I always, always have to be like negative. I can't think something good's going to happen. <laughs> so, like, the fact that you. So, you have, have to tell me that Britney Spears is going to shit her pants in front of me. That's what you have to do to me. Because, like, how, like, just the thought of you having your opportunity to be with her. I have to throw something in you it. You have to something ruin it. Has, something bad. Okay. It's, like, it's like the dream that you're having. You're having a wet dream of Britney, and all of a sudden she's like, <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm convinced there are certain women in this world that don't go to the bathroom. I think Britney's oh. one of them. She just doesn't perform Ooh. bodily functions. Ooh. I have to turn. Ooh. Ooh, Swedish meatballs. Oops. I'm bossy. Don't come in here. Ooh. That's it. How come we don't have one of those shirts yet? That our buddy Trot Jeff didn't make one of those. An I gassy shirt. <laughs> Who the fuck's gonna wear that? I have a picture of the fucking bathroom on the kids cruise with the fucking guy in a hazmat suit walking in. 
with the little thing hanging on the doorknob. Do not enter cleaning. <laughs> cleaning? It's the middle of the day. What are you doing? <laughs> anyway. Oh, God. Oh, oh, anyway, oh. many of those listeners that we just read their comments, a oh. lot of those guys are Patreons of our show, Tom. And Patreon is where people subscribe and they help our show out monetarily. And there's four different categories. And uh, they do a tremendous service to us. They help us out in many different ways. And what we do in turn is get them involved in the show, whether it's merch, whether it's uh, uh, picking the album for the album review crew episode, whether it's our March Madness tournament, uh, ep- uh, episode polls, uh, flash uh, flashback Fridays. All sorts of things we get them involved in, especially the Patreon website where the message boards there are fucking hilarious. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's a real family. You guys have helped us out tremendously. The ones that haven't joined yet, take a look. See if there's something that interests you. See if you want to uh, uh, become a Patreon family member. And uh, we appreciate it if you do because it does help us out a lot. And if you like our show and you want to be a, a member, Please go to our, go to him, go, go to, to him, our, <laughs> go to him, <laughs> go to our website. And on the front landing page, you'll be an icon there for Patreon. Click that and you'll go and you'll read all what you need to know about our Patreon membership. And you can also go to the app Patreon, or you can actually just go to patreon.com and find us. Shout it out loudcast search for creators. Uh, thank you to our Patreon family members. And uh, thank you for those that are interested. Come join. Come part of the fun and help us out. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Patreon people, we love you guys. Uh, Our eternal gratitude, we say it every week because you deserve it uh, for all the support that you give us. Uh, New Patreons, longtime Patreons, the early birds, everybody, you guys rock. Please check us out. Go to patreon.com, download the app, click on the link on our website, shoutoutloudcast.com. Check us out and please become part of our family. Thank you. Tom, what we do next is we go over to Kiss World and find out what's going on there. Yeah, so Kiss is back doing a little bit of touring. They did a show uh, in Wisconsin. Yeah, so they did a show at Crandon, Wisconsin, kind of a one-off event there. Um, And that was kind of exciting for all those people. Uh, But the other news is that Kiss is going to be performing at the 2023 AFL Grand Final event. In Australia, um, which is apparently their version of like the Super Bowl, and that is uh, September 30th. So I know uh, Jack Panacchio is very excited about that uh, because who wouldn't want Kiss to perform at that event? I don't know. It seems like Kiss just will just do literally anything right now. Uh, with all due respect to the people of Crandon, Wisconsin, and the AFL, they'll just they'll just do anything. Yeah, apparently uh, I think it was Crowded House. Talk about fucking retro bands was going to play there and they had a cancel. And so Kiss came in and I've seen all these articles where like, I don't know, just it's like the Rolling Stone of, uh, of Australia, people bitching that it's Kiss and they compared it to the disastrous meatloaf concert that played there not too long ago. This wow. is their big Super Bowl. So they're wondering if Kiss has it, buddy. I mean, if you, all those events are always fucking not being performed live, let's say. So if that's the criteria, Kiss is going to fucking blow that place out. I mean, it's going to be amazing. You guys are going to love it. But I did get and see some negative feedback from people bitching that it's Kiss that got selected to play this, which I I find hard to believe because Kiss is still legends in Australia. The only thing I could think of is it's the same when they announce who's playing the Super Bowl halftime show and people just bitch. Even if it's even if they're the biggest star in the world, people bitch and bitch. Yeah, and, bitch. and then so, the article it, is easy to write because you're going to get eyes on it. Exactly. So it could be that. I'm, I'm not yeah. sure. I'm not sure. Uh, but other exciting news for all you people still wondering where your KISS 2020 goodbye packages is. Uh, they're heading back to Dubai on Friday, October 13th for a one-off show. Uh, so yeah, maybe they're going to pick up all your uh, stuff that you ordered three years ago. I don't know. I just can't believe that that's still a thing. And it's just the, the, the way they just gaslight kiss fans into thinking that stuff's just going to go away and never be spoken of again. It's insane how that's not even a topic anymore, but anyways, yeah, they go, they're going back to Dubai in October. So yeah, I saw Tommy put up a video of them rehearsing 
and him yeah. fucking playing some guitar. So that looked good. And then finally, we got to end with this. And that is because we were, were going to go to the A show in Nashville, New Hampshire, right down Tom's, uh, down the street from Tom. Yep. Um, we got bombarded with a lot of DMs and personal emails and things like that about the show. The videos that people sent were a fucking disaster. Yeah. And these aren't, these aren't our opinions of them. These, no. these are, these are, these are videos of somebody who look, neither one of us are doctors or, or people who can perform a diagnosis. There is something going on physically with Ace. I'm sorry, there just there just is, and that's that's not that's not something that puts a smile on either of our faces. There's something going on with him that is not right. Yeah, I don't. I mean, again, I don't know the background of what's going on between the people that work for him and all that stuff. But I don't. From what I see as an outsider, it, people aren't doing him right. He that guy needs some fucking rest. Be schlepping him on the road playing horrendously is not helping him his reputation his legacy it's all getting hurt uh he he doesn't have the energy to do anything okay and what we're seeing in performance wide is brutal and the people that are at these shows are saying it to us too and then we see the videos and we're agreeing with them yeah this is fucking awful so i i don't know they got to get him off the road uh, they got to change things around. They got to fix um, what he's playing and for how long, because it's not working. And it, and I, I hate to kind of, I don't know, kind of uh, predict this, but something bad will happen sooner or later if they don't fucking fix this. Cause he's yeah, not because he's not healthy. Yeah. yeah the, the thing I'm noticing too is Zeus and I were talking about this before we started recording is the rapid like the deterioration yes. of Ace. A couple months ago, you know, even the beginning of the year, we were like kind of goofing at like how kind of sloppy it's like, look at Ace. But now it's honestly, it's not something that's comical. Like you can tell that this, he's struggling. And I don't know, you know I'm not making accusations on anything because we don't know, but the, 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 the deterioration is happening in real time. And you just hope that there's somebody, I, I don't know, like Zeus, we've said it before. I don't know if the people who are handling him have his best interests at hand, because he just doesn't look well. So. Yeah. And uh, someone needs to take care of him and help yeah. him yeah. not keep him on the road. And so you can make money and then relive your life as a rock star or want to be hanging out rock star. Right. I, yeah, exactly. It, it's just, nobody could see him. If that's like my brother or my uncle or my bro- like cousin, I'd be right. like, dude, what the fuck, man? So it's sad. Yeah, yeah, it's sad. So anyways, and apparently, though, Tommy did throw it once again. Hey, yeah, but I'm not using tracks like Paul. Buddy, you're not helping yourself because half the audience is like, please do. Dude, you're not even using your guitar, let alone tracks. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Here's a pick for you. Here's a pick for you. Here's a pick for you. Oh, shit. I forgot the chord. What are we playing again? Cold chin? <laughs> Fucking A. Like- brutal. Brutal. Yeah. Anyway, Tom, let's take a break. And uh, I'm going to ask Ace if he knows this song off of Sonic Boom. Oh, shit. Was that the album we did right after Love Gun? All right, we're back. And uh, good news. I know people are anxiously awaiting the uh, construction of my new shed, also known as Ace's house. Really good thing he did for me when he was downtown for his show. He picked up the permit for me for, for the building. For the so it's really good. Yeah, hey, yeah. I told the guy I was pretty good at construction. Had a couple tools of my and uh, you know I filled out the proper paperwork and you know I said it was going to be a two bedroom shed. Is that okay? Because you know I'm going to be living in there. Yeah, I told him I I'm, I'm Paul Fraley, subcontracted to Chris Chris and Cusano Landscaping. And they gave me the permit right on the spot. Fucking A. See, we anyway, can't, we, we can't even have a serious discussion about Ace no. with just doing the Ace Because jokes, he deserves it? everything to be lighthearted. Nobody oh, I know. I know. I'm, I'm with you, brother. I'm with yeah. you, brother. I, 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 hear, I hear you, Gene. Doc, thanks, brother. Thanks, Doc. All right. I'll see you later, Bill of Coin. Talk to you later. All right, Sean. I'll see you. 
<laughs> anyway, Tom, it's album review time. Oh, this is when the laughing stops because now we have to talk about Sonic Boom. Oh, be nice. <laughs> Go ahead. Sonic Boom. We're getting to the last of the albums. We haven't hit this one yet. Yep. Tell me about it. Your first uh, interaction with it. All right. So comes out in October 2009. Uh, and it was actually a very, very exciting time because it was over 10 years since Psycho Circus. So no studio album for a while. And of course, the first studio album with Eric and Tommy. And the promo was wild. Walmart was the exclusive distributor of it. Certain Walmarts, depending on where you lived in the United States, were going to have these things called the Kiss Corner with all this merch and, you know, Kiss M&Ms and Kiss Mr. Potato Heads and T-shirts and classic albums. And it was like, holy shit, like, this is pretty cool. Like, kind of reinvigorating yourself as a Kiss fan, you know? It was it was a big deal. I remember it was exciting. And I remember, you know, this is pre-streaming, so, you know, going out and buying the CD at Walmart, listening to it, and, you know, obviously we'll get into it, but it, it was it was a very, very exciting time for it. You know, the vinyl... The, the legitimate official vinyl is very, very, very hard to find. So right now I have the, I have a, the bootleg that's, that's pretty readily available, comes in multiple colors because of, of course, as I mentioned earlier, Walmart was the exclusive distributor. So vinyl is the, the, the official vinyl for these go for like insane amounts of money, but obviously we'll, you know, we'll get it. We'll get into the cover art and all that stuff that's included with it. But yeah, I, I do remember it was a huge deal back in 09 with Walmart and, uh, and the excitement of, of a new kiss album with Eric and Tommy. Yeah. Tom, the thing that I remember the most excited. Yeah. Kiss. Yeah. Walmart. Okay. Uh, and I'm, part of me was like, are they going to make more money or less money because they're only with Walmart? I don't know. Yeah. But the thing I remember is I remember them. I think they showed up on the Tonight Show and they played Modern Day Delilah. Yep. And I know it had already come out on the radio and I watched the video and watched the performance. My God, that's fucking pretty good. Yep. I was like, holy shit. Yep. And uh, I was real excited. Bought the album, listened to it. I'll give you my opinion on it in a little bit. But uh, I remember getting this and be like, oh, three things in here. I'm like, ah, oh, they re-recorded the fucking what? Oh, dude, fucking brutal. I mean, yeah. we understand we understand why bands do that. It's for rights so they can own the songs. It's a terrible fucking idea. Dawkins did it. Bands have done it in the past. It's terrible. The only other thing that was semi-cool was that there's a DVD live in Buenos Aires from a, a performance, I believe, from the Alive 35 tour. So the packaging was very cool. Comes a little booklet with lyrics and stuff. So Kiss getting back to the packaging, kind of cool stuff, some pictures. So, I mean, they, they did do it right. They did give us something a little bit extra. I mean, having a DVD of a concert is kind of cool. Uh, the re-recording is just fucking brutal beyond belief. But I, again, I understand why they did it. And of course, it says produced by Paul Stanley co-produced by greg collins and tiny tiny letters on the back of the cd so you know who's running the show there all right let's talk about the cover the only thing good about this cover is that it's done by michael dore or dorette uh who did the 1976 rock and roll over cover and i gotta be honest with you this is such a horrendous grade school attempt at trying to achieve some classic kiss imagery this looks like Microsoft Paint or like some like Adobe Windows art program. It's 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 awful. The the font is awful. The pictures they use is awful. The imagery, the graphics, it, it's this is re- this is really bad. Yeah, it looks like somebody was using Flash or something. Yeah, back exactly. Then. It looks like it looks like a student graphic designer. It's terrible. The fact that the guy that did rock and roll over did this stunning. I don't get it. It's, it's, it's horrendous. It's, it's not very good. Now you open nope. it up. Yep. There's pictures of the band members. You notice yep. how it says the band members and then what they do? Not yes. cat man, demon. Yeah. Space oh, man. Th- oh, this was before all that. This is 09. They were yeah. kind of still like, Oh, we're Paul and Gene and Tommy and Eric. Yeah. yeah. I but I thought that the the blowback from the whole fake ace and all that oh, shit yeah. was going on then. I don't know. Regardless. Yeah. Um and I was like, where the fuck is Eric? He's underneath the C D. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh. I was like, what the fuck? And on the back, you know, it has the songs, big more graphics, and Tom is correct, produced by Palm Stanley. 
co-produced by Greg Collins. And then it talks about the other stuff that's with this. Uh, let's get into the facts. Okay. Sonic Boom released October 6, 2009. Paul Stanley, Greg Collins. So when I looked up Greg Collins, he was like a mixer, an engineer. So when we talked about this, when we did the producer episode not too long ago, Tom, we mentioned Collins was kind of like fixing, doing the sound shit for Paul, yep. probably. Yep. And Paul yep. did everything, hence the big stuff and the fact that this guy doesn't really have producing credits, has a lot of engineer stuff. Right. Um, the album went to number two. And it beat the highest charting Kiss album, which was Psycho Circus, as number three. Mm-hmm. And they, they probably didn't go to Walmart exclusively. They probably would have got that ex- that elusive number one uh, Billboard uh, album if they didn't do that. Mm-hmm. So it went to number one U.S. top hard rock albums, number one U.S. independent albums, number one U.S. top rock albums. It was their 19th album. Their first in 11 years, first with the current lineup. Hall said, the purpose of this album isn't to let people know that we're still around. It's to let people know we can still knock out anybody who's out there. Oh, my God. The album was sold exclusively through Walmart in the U.S. and Canada. Yep. Uh, the three discs package was uh, included his classics, which is really... That album that I had, the Jig- Jigaku Retsuden, yep, which is sold in Japan, a greatest album sold in Japan, greatest hits album, yep. and then a five song live DVD recorded April fifth, two thousand nine, in Buenos Aires, Argentina, as part of their Kiss Alive thirty five World Tour. Brian Whelan plays on piano on this album, and all songs were written by Kiss. There's no outside writers on this. Yeah, and it's funny when you look at the reviews for this, it got favorable <laughs> reviews. <laughs> Spin gave it eight out of ten stars. Rolling Stone gave it three out of five. Entertainment Weekly gave it a B. All Music gave it three and a half out of five. Wow. Just wow. <laughs> I don't know. All right. We kind of know where you're going with this. So let's let's actually confirm all what you think about this. Why don't we get into the songs? Let's do it. First song. Modern Day Delilah, a legitimately awesome Kiss song. Great riff, heavy song. Like 11 years after Psycho Circus and this, they come out of the gate with this. I'm like, wow, like this is interesting. And it's a Paul song. Uh, the solo, I think, is fucking fantastic. Tommy is on fire. Uh, but one thing you notice right out of the bat, something's going on with Paul's voice. Sounds like he needs to clear his throat for the entire album. He's got like that fry effect with his throat. And it could be, you know, the surgery or it could just be the weakening of the vocal cords. I mean, you know, this is what 14 years ago, this album came out. So you can hear that right off the bat. But I think, I think it's, it's a ripping song. It's, I think it's an impressive song for Kiss to, to release in 2009. And again, I got to give kudos to, uh, to Tommy because I think the solo is fucking fantastic. The chorus is a little bit eh for me. Some of that kind of song and dance that the band's doing with the chorus and kind of the call and answer stuff, whatever. I, I'm not a huge fan of that, but overall, I think it's a great tune. Modern Day Delight, written by Paul Stanley. It's the first single, first single in 11 years. It made it to number 50 in mainstream rock tracks. It was a downloadable content for Guitar Hero 5 and Band Hero. Yep. It starts off a nice hard rocking song. I, I'm the opposite, Tom. I love the fucking chorus. Okay. I love how in the second verse, Paul begins with, listen. And then I'm like, oh, yeah. Is that where fucking he gets it from? Yep. Listen. <laughs> Think of family here, people, and listen. I'm not sure on the, the vocals. I feel like Paul's not at his full volume. So I like when he screams like, not today, and first mistake. And last on the last verse, the accents on it, I'm like, I'm, I'm listening to it with what I know about Paul now. So yeah. I'm like, maybe I'm judging it, and I'm yep. thinking... There's something there that doesn't sound like Paul normally did. I agree. And that's why I'm wondering if Greg, um, uh, that's why I'm wondering if that's where Greg Collins comes into play with this production. I don't know. I don't know. But I wrote 
I love, love, love Tommy solo. It's fucking awesome. Fucking one of the best solos in the Kiss library. I agree, which is shocking to say. In the at the two twenty eight mark and the two thirty eight mark, where he does that, nah, 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 yep. man, that fucking thing is awesome, awesome, and <laughs> it's just uh, little Paulisms that it just stupid shit that I pick up on. Shame, shame, shame on you! Oh, I love that. Oh, oh, shame on you, baby. <laughs> Like Cherokee Boys, Paul Stanley. Shame, shame, shame. <laughs> uh, yep. And I like how they changed the lyrics a little bit on the chorus. Yes. At the end, it's now you'll pay. Loves DK. Yes. It's fucking great. I but think that's good. Cool. I've made this a point, and anytime I talk about music, if there's one person I trust in this world to write a song that I will like, it's Paul Stanley. This is an album they haven't done in 11 years. He comes out. What is Kiss going to sound like in the modern days? This is me in 2009 thinking about it. What are they going to sound like? It's still a fucking great song. Whether yep. Paul's doing this in, in the 2000s, whether he's writing a song from in the 70s, whether he's doing it in the 80s, or whether he's writing some on Revenge in the 90s. He still can write whatever the sound of music it is, whatever's in, he can still hit it with a hard rock song. Fucking man is a genius. I, I just, he knows how to f- make move me with his music. Uh, there's a video. Yep. It's like giant kiss walking through Detroit. Mixed I love with it. Concert footage. If I'm like uh, uh, on the fence fan, I want to go see that. Exactly. The concert looks insane. Yes. Yeah. And th- this was a big deal. This concert, they did the sonic boom over Europe. We did the hottest show on earth tour which we did an episode on. If you want to go back and listen to that as part of our tour series, we did the hottest show on earth. I'm telling you when this album came out in this song, I was like fucking a man kiss is somehow they're back. I don't understand. And then we have the rest of the album. We need to talk about. <laughs> I like the video. You guys should check it out. Yeah, it is. It's fun. And like most kiss albums, song number two, we go over to Gene. Let's hear it. Russian roulette. I really wish that when I pulled the trigger, the bullet <laughs> blew my brains out on this one. I mean, uh, right off the bat, uh, Gene, I love you dearly. This is a really rough album for Gene. And this song, I- I'm not quite sure what's happening here. It's a plotting song. It's a messy song. There's no groove. The chorus is terrible. His lyrics are lazy. You can, we did this with, I think, out of control with Peter Chris. You can, you can guess what the next word is because he's, <laughs> cause it's like, it's like rhyming the, the, uh, when the, when the band is doing, ah, uh, like that. It's, it, 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 there's, there's no groove. It sounds like there's like a couple different songs that they stitch together in editing and, and the, co- I, I, I don't, I, I don't know. This is this is just this is just bad. And I, and to have this follow such a ripping tune like modern day Delilah was like, I mean, talk about letting the fucking air out of the balloon. This this was a rough one for me. And I love Gene, but I I I can't I can't save him on this one. This is bad. Russian roulette written by Gene Simmons, Paul Stanley. At the seven second mark, the bass comes in. Boom, 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 boom. Yep. And I put this as a fun chorus, Tom. The pre chorus is pretty cool too, but the one pull of the trigger is all you're going to get. So is okay. he trying to say that Russian roulette, it's it's a one night stand? I this guess. is Russian roulette. You're gonna get one fuck and get the fuck out. Yeah, and if I get you pregnant, like with <laughs> Russian roulette, if I fucking shoot the bullet, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I'm know, not a big fan of that. Uh, it's not mm. good. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of tough. Uh, yeah. Open up and let your backbone slip. Dude. Okay, he does that on the on. There's a song on Monster. He does the same thing. What is that slang for? Like lay down, <laughs> like your what? backbone slip. So oh, I like, can't. I'm not picturing a young, lean 70s gene. I'm picturing a 65, 70-year-old man trying to bang his 70-year-old wife like with a broken hip. Let your bad, broken hip 
Move. That's what I'm thinking. I'm like, like oh. your back. I'm thinking. I'm thinking of like the woman being like, ah, my backbone <laughs> slipped. Oh shit! Like Got a herniated disc, Gene. Exactly. Like, like these fucking old ladies now. Like right. it's not a. It's not a like a sexy image. Like like when you listen it's, to uh, uh, "Love Them and Leave Them," right? No, like, I'm coming in in my limo and I'm fucking. You want to fuck me? I want to fuck you. This is like. Hey, old lady, I hope I don't break your back and you toss your hip and fuck. But what's up with your wife's back and shit? And, but that's and what I mean. Bowed. But that's what I mean. The song is like so plodding and slow. It sounds like the it's the sound of a 70 year old guy <laughs> trying to get laid. I don't know. But I said decent solo by Tommy again. And then the cool guitar outro by Tommy. So yes, far, yes. Tommy, two songs in a row, kicking ass. Yep. Let's go to Poison next. Song three. All right. So nothing but a good time. I mean, uh, never enough. How does no one know that this is nothing but a good time? How does nobody in the engineering booth, the production, but nobody says, Paul, Paul, you're pushing it here. <laughs> this is fucking note for note. Nothing but a good time. Yeah, because Brett Michaels is it, thinks Paul he, and Kiss are his heroes. He's not going to push it. I mean, th- okay, here's the problem with this. And this is a problem on a lot of this album. Well, maybe not maybe not a lot of this album. I can't believe I'm going to say this because we we know about Kiss and Paul and lyrics. These are terrible lyrics. <laughs> like so Super corny and cheesy and like like you like you always say, Zeus, you can do it, water boy. Like it's now ne- oh, like em- self empowerment. It's never enough. And whenever you start a sentence or a lyric with people say, I'm like, oh God, what what is he gonna tell me now? It, it's I mean, it's upbeat, it's 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 hooky. I get that, but it's just I don't know. I just what a what a cliff dive we've taken from modern day Delilah to get to get to where we are. <laughs> Never enough. Paul Stanley and Tommy Thayer. It's the third single off this album. It made it to number thirty. Billboard Heritage Rock Tracks. What is that old guy in rock music? <laughs> you know, you know what that that's that's a first of all that is a fancy classy way of saying old guys listen to this I'm shit. Like, I don't want to hit that chart. Like you know. Unbelievable. Anyways, yeah, I put this as poison is nothing but a good time. I said it's a fun chorus. Uh, give me rules just for breaking. Oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> Stanley Eisen, 70 year old. Oh, you're such, a, you're, su- you're such a rule breaker. Oh, gelato eating bike helmet, fucking wearing electric bike guy. You Give ain't breaking anything. Breaking. Oh, oh, oh. This is what this is what I'm saying. Ooh, give me rules. Oh. Uh, uh, another just. nice Tommy solo. If you didn't know the Poison song, I would say this is a fun song. It's. I agree. It's, the way they did this, it's, it reminds me of their "Read My Body," and what's the other one on Crazy Nights? "Bang Bang You," "Never Enough," that stop and go and singing and. Yeah, but at least those songs talked about banging chicks. This is, I don't, but it's still a fun and good song. If I didn't know okay. the Poison okay. song, I wouldn't hold it against it. All it's, right. It's decent. It's a good rock song for them. Okay. That's how I see it. Um, so let's go to song four. Yes, I know nobody's perfect. Now, for all the bad things I just said about Gene, I, I got to tell you, this is one of the fucking catchiest earworm <laughs> songs and uh, right off the bat i'll just f- full disclosure i do not listen to sonic boom often i don't I, I don't i do not seek this album out if it pops up on shuffle or one of my kiss playlists fine i don't seek this out so s- whenever we do an album review you know we, we plan album reviews like weeks out so you spend plenty of time getting it and i spent a ton of time listening to this this is just a fucking fantastic song. It is a fun song. It's Gene having a good fucking time. It's got a cool groove. I I think the chorus is I can't get it out of my goddamn head. And Gene with his little Gene isms, take him off, babe. Like I I mean I I I I, I it's so ridiculous. The lyrics are so silly. 
you know, baby, take off your clothes. Like, that has nothing to do with the rest of the song. <laughs> it's so good. I, it's so good. I'm and, foaming uh, at the mouth to jump in, but go for it. No, no, no. I'm just, I, I, I'm, I was so happy to hear this song and I always thought it was catchy. But spending as much time as I have with this album in preparation for the episode, I'm like, this fucking song is fantastic. This is a great song. Yes, I know. Parentheses, nobody's perfect. Gene Simmons. I like Gene's vocal de- uh, delivery on this. And you okay. know, we always talk about Gene as different voices. I like the one on this. Okay. I love the Gene, the Geneisms. Oh, they're awesome. And that's me, baby. <laughs> Take them off, babe. Come on, baby. Take off your clothes. I love it. I said the same thing. I wrote it down, Tom. Nobody's perfect. Baby, it's time to take off your clothes. What the fuck <laughs> does that have to do with anything? It's not has nothing to do with the song. You no, know, I've made some mistakes, but nobody's perfect. Take off your clothes. Hey, take off your clothes. Take them off, babe. I love when he says take them off, babe. Like, like. I don't, it makes no sense. It just reminds me of that whole, it reminds me of that whole Bill Clinton. What was that fucking girl lady with a big ass no- nose that he was accused of fucking oh, um, harassing? Linda. Um, no, uh, Paula Jones. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Supposedly, Bill Clinton's a ladies man. She said, like, I was in his office and he was talking to me about like his kid's school or something, whatever it was. And then out of nowhere, he just whips out his dick. <laughs> Hang him off, babe. <laughs> what kind of game is that? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's what this is. Yeah, come on. Nobody's perfect. Get the balls. <laughs> what it's is like, that? What movie is that where the guy goes, excuse me while I whip this out? <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, that's uh, that's from uh, uh, Blazing Saddles. Blazing Saddles. And all the yeah. people are like, what? Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. I just, oh. I like the call back at the, the pre-chorus. Yes, I know. Yes. I love the Tommy solo again. Yep. And then he stops and he goes, yeah. It's a good then, gene song. And I'm like, is this a fucking prelude? Yeah. That's why we get what we get on Back to the Stone Age. Maybe I just put this is a fun fucking song. It really is. It's you can tell G and even even at the end, like during the outro, you can hear Gene like laugh, like kind of laughing. It's yeah. like he's just have he's having a fun fucking time here. The callbacks are fantastic. The fucking yeah. vo- like this group of the four may be the best singing group that Kiss has ever had. Ooh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So if you want to say guitar guy. Who's a better singer than Tommy? Tommy's voice is great. We'll get to that. Maybe. And I think, and, and maybe, I think Eric's, um, I think Eric's, Eric's harmonies are great. And his vocals are great, yeah. too. Maybe Vinnie Vincent. Supposedly, I don't really catch it. But everyone talks about, oh, Vinnie's a great background singer. Vinnie's a I great singer. But he's fucking better than Ace. And he's better than oh, yeah, he's, Mark. No, he's, and, and no offense to Buddy Bruce. He's a better singer than Bruce. Yeah. No, no, no. I give you. I agree. So, I agree. And then Eric does an awesome job. And backing vocals on all Kiss stuff. Yeah, he does. So I think the the callbacks are so prevalent on this album because they can do it. Yeah. All right, Tom. Let's go to the song you've been dreading for us to review. Here it is. 200-something episodes, and now I have to finally talk about a song that everybody already knows how I feel about. Stand. Wow. (laughs) Uh, here, here, Here are my notes. Awful. Lyrics are painful. Dreadful chorus, which doesn't even fit the song. The breakdown is a mess. Just when you think it can't get worse, it does. Those are my notes for Stan. There is absolutely not a single note of this song that is redeeming. It, I don't understand. It is, this is, we say this all, this is not what I want from a kiss song. This is Paul. Last week, D. Snyder talked about self-serving. Bands doing things that are self-serving. This is self-serving. No fucking Kiss fan wants to hear this song, except for one who's sitting across from me right now. It's it's just it's an embarrassing mess of a song. Even even if the lyrics weren't corny and cheesy and horrendously terrible, the arrangement of the song 
I mean, the chorus like slows down at least during the one thing. I mean, if you're going to put a gun to my head, make me say something good, at least during the verse, there's kind of a good rhythm and a good melody, but then the chorus like shifts gears. And then that breakdown is just torturous to get through. Just, ugh, just brutal, fucking brutal. This is the wrongest Tom has ever been on this show. I love it. I love it. Stand written by Paul Stanley, Gene Simmons. First off, I love Paul Gene trade off songs. Love. Them. I like that. I like that too. Okay. I like the lyrics. Dude, have you never heard a Kiss song before? They always write cheesy, uplifting songs. That's always not, what not like this. Dude, go, listen by a, my... go listen to Asylum. I'm the king of the mountain. Trial. Life's a trial by fire. King Shit of the like Mountain. That. That's King of the Mountain. That's Paul like flexing me. Like, I'm fucking King of the Mountain. Like it's not like stand it's in, by my that's side. That's not empowering. No. He's saying, I'm, saying I'm the King of the Mountain is not empowering. It's not like look over your shoulder. What you me? It's not this. Dude, this trial side, by know, th- fire. Th- okay, look. I know. I know. Dude, I like can name songs. about 15, 20 songs that you, Kiss you has can, done like this. Not like this. You can't. Oh. Stand what? by my side. I'll be there for you. Dude, it's get a the song fuck out of here. Written with Paul and Gene in mind for each other. I it's get it. Them Would backing you? each other. I love it. Uh, That's fine. You can love it. The lyrics are typical kiss fucking water boy lyrics. This is you not can typical. do it. This is I'm, I've got your. I, no, it's not. It's them talking about each other. In the in the, and I find that the lyrics actually work. If I didn't know any better, I would say that fucking uh, Holly Knight was involved because it's very raise your glasses like it's like that. That's a very typical type of lyric. We did it. We're gonna win. I these are like better than fucking. You can do it, Water Boy. They're I think they're more uh, sophisticated than the typical. Arrangement. I'm shocked that it's just Paul and Gene on this. Ugh. Really shocked. I I will give you that. I'm surprised. I think it speaks volumes about what they think about Tommy and Eric that they weren't on this album. I'm um, excuse me on this song. I, I I would I would have been interested to hear all four of them sing on this. Paul has to add his Paulisms in here. Oh, God. when you need me, we're gonna be there. We're gonna make it. Just look over your shoulder. Can you feel it? Can you hear it? Then when Gene starts off his verse, he's gotta go. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> I love what that's so Gene. <laughs> and then Paul does that oh. when he starts his part. I love this, and he does it a lot here. Paul, Paul is a student. He does this a lot after Revenge, and that is these little Ezrin bridges. I fucking love that. I love it. I'm oh, the opposite of you. That breakdown is wow. fucking musically fan. Fucking tastic! What I just wanna? And it's the I just wanna. It gets climatic, and then boom, it picks up back again. And the fact that you did not mention how incredible Tommy's outro is on this—I don't think I made it to the end of the song. Oh, I think that's why I probably never realized it. Outro is fantastic. His guitar fills is so. It's got so much touch and feeling on it. It's fucking. Incredible, especially at the 425 mark. I had to write it down because it's just, uh, it's one of my, I was just talking about one of my favorite solos before. This is probably uh, even better than uh, modern day Delilah for me. This outro, I find the song, the, the chorus, the pre chorus, catchy, awesome, fucking love this song. Love Gene and Paul trading off, love stand. I don't know what Tommy's thinking. I need to. Get, I need to get the last three minutes of my life back. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we do the show, brother. Well, you will be the cold. I will be the hot, and let's do the next song. Hot and cold. Uh, everything I said about Russian roulette, ditto. <laughs> uh, the chorus is a mess. Awful lyrics. Gene sounds ridiculous. The song is disjointed. It doesn't sound like it's it was arranged correctly. The bridge into the chorus is terrible. The lyrics rhyming pleasure with treasure. <laughs> Gene, what the fuck are we doing here? This is, let me introduce you to pleasure. I'll, <laughs> I will seduce, seduce, I'll seduce you, my, you treasure. my treasure. What? It just, 
Oh my God. This is the guy that did calling Dr. Love and plaster caster. And what is happening on this album? You gave me a little bit of, you shined a little bit of light on when you did. Yes. I know nobody's perfect, but this, this is right up there with Russian roulette. It's just, it's a mess. It's a, just a poorly constructed song. Yeah. Right. Uh, hot and cold written by Gene Simmons. There's a deep gene bass on the. I know. I knew you were going to pick up on that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, I see. I will say I like the chorus and Gene has probably had these lyrics for years in his black book of lyrics. Hey, and he's like, I want to put that. If it's too loud, you're too old. What would work with that? How about hot and cold? Okay. Hot and cold. If it's too loud, or you're too old. Oh, I got it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love the dig this into the guitar solo. Settle down. I like the little bridge again that they do. Baby, feel my power of power. Just, what the, just, what the fuck are we throw doing? Throw that in the Gene Simmons <laughs> Hall of Fame lyric. Feel my tower of power. Oh, oh, it's just, oh my God. It's just. I. All right. I will say this, Tom, and you're not going to like it. Go ahead. I like the callback on the outro. Too hot. Too That's not bad. That's you know not what it bad. reminds me of? I got love for sale. The backing yeah. vocals. I got back. I got okay. love for sale. Too hot. Too cold. They're using that like yep. voice. That, 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 little, high, that high, that high pitch yeah. kind of. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. the only that's thing. That, that's the only fucking thing it has in common with got love for sale. All right. Let's go to Eric Singer's first song on a Kiss album. All for the glory, Eric Singer. All right. Okay. The thing that kills this song for me is, is the lyrics. It, it's like, I think when the song starts, I think it's got a really cool groove. I think it's got a good vibe. I think the it's got a nice tempo. The guitar sound good. The drums, Eric's vocals sound good. I just can't sign on to this one for all, all for one, like you can do it, like warriors come out and play shit. I'm I'm a bad, I'm a badass. Like I I play by the rules. I break the rule. Like I just there's too much of that on this album. There's not enough cock rock on there's not enough like I said this with Psycho Circus. There's not enough like fuck me, suck me on this album. There's too much of like Rocky Balboa training montage music. And, and that's what this is. It's, it's, that's the thing that sinks. Why, that's did, the thing that, why did you just say there's too much cheesy Joey Casada music? Well, cause that was about where I was going to go, but you're right. This is a song that Joey Casada would play as he's putting on his drum gloves for a performance. <laughs> as he's you putting know. on his glow in the dark gloves as he goes yeah. skateboarding in his backyard. Yeah. L- lyrically, it's, it, it kills it for me because I think Eric's vocals sound good. I think the song musically, I it, I think it's it's good just, lyrically. I just it it's it you just roll your eyes when you listen to the whole fucking thing. That that's just me. All for the glory, written by Paul Stanley, Gene Simmons. No Eric Singer, but this is the first Eric Singer song that he sang. Eric's got a good voice, and I could picture Peter actually singing this song. Absolutely, yes. Tommy gives a real good solo. Very melodic and a little bit longer than most songs. Maybe because he was working with Eric, they gave him some, they yep. gave him some rope there or something. The chorus repeats way too much on the outro. Thank you. I, I forgot to bring that up. Excuse me for interrupting. I noticed that when I was listening to it. I'm like, wow, how many times is he doing this? But I don't think it's a bad song. I don't. Okay. I, I, okay. I just, you know, it's not one of my favorites. That's how I will describe it. Okay. But. <laughs> <laughs> we have that saved for the next song. Danger Us. Okay. I think this is a fucking great song. I think this is a fucking killer Paul song. The groove of it, the bridge. I I mean, obviously the lyrics, especially the chorus, is tacky and cheesy, but it's that tacky, cheesy shit that I love that Paul does. Danger you, danger me, danger us. It's so cheesy, it just makes you chuckle. But that aside, musically, I think the song is powerful. I think it's driving. I think it's got a, it, it, it's really got a good vibe. I think the guitars sound good. I think Paul sounds good. I kind of like the, 
the backing, like the call and answer, you know, again, the kind of two parts trouble, you know, it's kind of, it is it, it's cheesy. I get it. But I think this is a really, really well-constructed song. And I feel like there's a couple songs in this album. Maybe I'll save it. I'll save it for the end when we do final thoughts, but a uh, dangerous, I think is, I love it. I've always loved it since like, I had the album. Dangerous written by Paul Stanley. It's heavy. When Paul says, light the dynamite. Oh yeah. His voice. You picked up on that. His oh, voice God. sounded it's, shaky. It, it's his voice. It, it almost, it sounds, it sounds like he's sick or that he's getting yeah. over like, like a sore throat. It's Raspy really, and something. really, really noticeable there. Yes. The chorus. And I have no other way of saying this. It's fucking stupid. I love it. It's fucking love it. beyond stupid. <laughs> danger me. Danger you. Danger us. <laughs> Two pots trouble. <laughs> the chorus reminds me of another fucking horrendous fucking song. Eat what? your heart out. Oh, <gasps> come on. One of the great songs off a of monster. One of, first, first of all, all right. what are you smoking? Oh, but we'll dude, get to that these, later. These two songs are horrendous. Oh, <gasps> You just spent five minutes waxing poetic about how great Stand is. Exactly. And, and Dangerous da- is bad? Danger me. Oh. Danger <laughs> you. Dangerous. dangerous. You know what's funny about this? You know, you know, you know, Russell Wilson, the quarterback? Yeah. His, his Twitter handle is Dangerous. <laughs> Fucking Love stupid. It. Love it. Love it. Stupid. And other parts, you can hear Paul's voice. Yeah. Getting kind of shaky on this song. And then he says, Oh, in beginning second verse, uh, Tommy, another solid solo. The chorus is just eat your heart out bad and Tommy killing it on the outro is what I have. This song sucks, dude. <laughs> oh, I can't believe that. I can't believe you think that song. I get the chorus is corny, but I can't believe you think that song sucks. Wow. <laughs> All right. Let's go to the next one. Oh boy. Wow. I'm an animal. Uh, God, I don't understand what's going on with Gene on this album. Every fucking song, except for Yes, I Know, is an applauding mess. No groove, no vibe, no sense of nothing. This is a horrendous attempt at trying to revisit God of Thunder. The lyrics are so predictable with the rhyming. Terrible, just trying so hard to conjure up that image of the God of Thunder. The chorus is horrendous. When he says no rules, I remember the first time I heard this, I thought it was like no rules, just right. Like a fucking Outback commercial. I'm like, what is going on here? Like, it's it's just a disjointed mess. It's up there with hot and cold and, and Russian roulette. It Gene really, really fucking whiffs on this album. And I hate saying that, but th- th- this is just this is bad. I'm an animal written by Paul Stanley, Gene Simmons, and Tommy Thayer getting a yep. writing credit there. Heavy. Gene using his demon voice, and especially in the pre chorus. Uh, the chorus is pretty cool, I put. The song, I will admit, just from listening to this over and over and over again, the song has grown on me. It was okay. always one of my worst songs on this album. And then I put what you just said. It's very demon. What would Ezrin do with this? And that's what I was thinking. What would Ezrin do? This is very God of Thunder. What, what, God would, of Thunder. what, would, what would Ezrin do with this album? What would anybody do? No, honest? No, 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 I'm not even joking. He would make this a lot better than it is because he's Bob Ezrin. Also, when he ends some of his verses, Gene's delivery reminds, reminds me of Rock and Roll Hell. If you listen okay. to Rock and Roll Hell and you hear him on the verses. Yeah, I can see that. Then you hear this, you're like, is that what, that's what he's doing? Rock and, and Roll Hell is a fucking great song, though. Tommy Solo, again, yep. fucking awesome, especially the 250 mark. Yep. He does, Gene does that screeching at the end. I'm not sure if it's from Unholy or something else. They reminded me of where he's screaming. Yep. yep. Um, again, I fucking hated this song until we mm-hmm. did this album review. It's grown on me. <laughs> of okay. all the Gene songs, it's grown on me. Okay. All right. Let's get to 
the spaceman's next song. When lightning strikes, the first time we get to hear Tommy Thayer on vocals. It's a fucking great song. But Tommy's vocals are fucking fantastic. I wish they gave him more of a chance at this. I know they're not going to. Great groove, cool chorus. I think the whole song really sounds cool. I, 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 I don't have a problem with this song at all. The only problem, well, I guess I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth now because I just said I have no problem with the song except for just the ace imagery. They're trying so hard. The lightning, the, you know, the storm, the hurricane, the, the, I get it. He's the spaceman and they want to conjure up that image, you know, when lightning strike. I get it. I get it. But other than that, I, I think this is a really, really nice introduction for people to hear a Tommy Thayer song. I think it's great. I think it's got a little bit of a, it's, it rocks a little bit. It, it's got a little bit of pop sensibility to it. Um, vocally, I think he sounds really good. So uh, this was a real pleasant surprise the first time I put this on and, Spending some time with this album, I found myself kind of singing the the chorus. This very catchy, hooky chorus. So, uh, kudos to Tommy and 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 Paul for this one. It's really well done. When lightning strikes, written by Tommy Thayer, Paul Stanley. I'm like yeah, cowbell in the beginning. Cool yeah. ACDC like riff. Eh, eh, right. Exactly. Yes. Yes. I love the vocals. Cools. It's a missing dynamic. He should have done more songs. I wrote. Yep. I agree. When he screams, I'm alive in the beginning, I thought that's Paul. Yeah. Twice he does that in the song. I always thought it was Paul. It sounds like him in the beginning of the yep. two verses. He sounds just like him. The solo is cool. I can't tell you. I think, I don't know whose idea it is. Maybe it's Paul to fucking be vindictive. But Paul, if he wanted to be vindictive, he'd be more vindictive with Peter, not Ace. Yep. Peter never did a Catman fucking shit in his songs. Never. And Eric Singer doesn't do Catman things in the two songs he does. No, Why? but he does have a. Th- his two songs are pretty much the same. All for the love of rock and roll. All for the glory. They're like you can. Do yeah, but he didn't write songs. this one. No, no, no I know. I, I, I get but, you. I get. But I get my point saying. is, yeah. Why are you making Tommy do like he's the fucking one? He's going to get shit from the ace crowd. You are not helping him. And the same thing on Monster with Out of This World. Yeah, same thing. that's my point. Yeah. There's so much shit they could have done to not put that target on him. Oh, well, whatever. I'm not going down that avenue. Right, uh, right. I think this is a fucking real good song. I yep. really like it. Yep. All right, let's go to the last track, song 11. Say yeah. Uh, I've always loved this song. I think this is a legitimately great song written, constructed by Paul. Uh, I think it's got a fantastic groove to it. The chorus is fun. It it sucks live. We've heard it live. I think it's a it's a dud live. It just doesn't translate very well. Um, I think the 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 guitar, the 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 pattern, the musical pattern of the songs with the guitar chords. I think it just has a really really nice sound to it. The bridge into the chorus is great. Um, I feel like this is one of those songs where if any other band other than Kiss did it, this has like chart potential. I, I think it's an undeniable catchy radio friendly rock song, and I th- there's a piece of me that sees why Paul has it on the end of the road set list i mean the crowd can chant say yeah but you've said it before zeus he's forcing this song on people to try to turn it into a a hit or or a fan favorite but aside from the live problems i have with it i just think it's a great song i think it's it's just a well put together kiss song it's i think it's paul at his best they yeah written by paul stanley it's the second it's the second single it went to number one in russia tom yeah okay there you go Paul says this. It was a song I know was going to be great. I know what the song was, and it turned out exactly the way I had hoped, and really better. The band has four great voices, so when we do a chorus together, it sounds like the world singing. This song is about how we shouldn't be wasting time and overthinking things. I'm like, projection much, Paul? Wasting time and overthinking things? However, The description I just read is exactly why that fucking song is in the set list. Yep, exactly. When Paul talks about songs and pats himself on the back, that song's going to be in there. He thinks this is a genius song. I wrote that. 
I wrote that song alone. Self-serving. Love Gun. That's I wrote right. that song alone. Yep. Like these are things that Paul wants. The biggest Kiss songs are songs I wrote. That's right. I right? agree. Not the songs that Gene sings. Yep. So this is it. Plus, I also put in here. This is one of the better studio than live songs. Absolutely, yes. Without a doubt. Paul probably pictured the Say Ya part as the band is doing the vocal back to him, and the callback is equivalent to I Love It Loud. Yeah. Get the crowd into When I say yeah, the crowd will go, say yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Yep. Right? And then there's the little Beatles thing, say yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, yep. I love the echoes on the lyrics in the verses. That sounds great. The pre-chorus in chorus is vintage Paul Stanley. And that's yep. why I love this song. It's that's Paul can write those hooky, catchy, hard rock fucking choruses. And I love the Ezra breakdown. Let me hear you say it. It's like dirty shit. Come on. Come on. Say it. Say yeah. It. Say what you want. Come on. Let son. Me- Come on, Sana, say it. <laughs> oh, I want, the, I want some Finnish. I'm, I'm tired of Finnish dick. I want some podcaster <laughs> dick. Please. <laughs> Ooh. What are we doing? Uh, Herda now? <laughs> I know. I don't know why. I fucked up all the impressions. But when they do that Ezrin breakdown, and then Paul fucking brings it up and goes, say, yeah, yeah, I fucking love that. I don't want to hear you, my. I mean, that's, that nope. is probably, that could be a top 10 chorus, Paul Stanley of all fucking time. It oh, is this- that fucking catchy and good the song the song is victimized by the fact that it's a kiss song honestly if if if, if you gave this to a bunch of other bands this would be a song that you hear Put this on bon jovi's new jersey oh absolutely when bon no jovi was releasing every song went to the number 10 imagine bon jovi singing this live uh, that's and, what I'm and talking on about. new jersey yep i agree fucking easily now yep. i will say this the song is kind of giving shit because it's in the set list. And of that course. doesn't help it. So people are like, oh, say yeah, it sucks. No, no, no. Listen to the studio fucking version. This song rocks. Yep, I agree. I agree. That's Sonic Boom. Sonic Boom. Remember when Paul used to do that in his oh, fucking God. intro? <laughs> Not good. Final thoughts? So this is an album, like, like I said earlier, I don't listen to often. And I had like a preconceived, or, or, I had a, fail, a false reality of this album in my mind. I remember telling myself, I'm like, this, Sonic Boom, it's pretty good. It's got modern day Delilah and Say Yeah. And, you know, I like Danger Us and, and this. I really did not remember how this most of this album is borderline unlistenable for me. It, it, there is really some, this might be the, the worst Gene album in the entire discography without question. He's got one listenable song on this album for me and I'm a Gene guy. So I think, you know, we talk about this a lot. Have you listen to monster. I'll get to that. <laughs> We've, we talk a lot about this on when we do ARC, you know, you spend a lot of time with an album and sometimes you're like, wow, I I like this album a lot more than I did. Or wow. I thought this album was better. You know, that kind of stuff. I thought this album was better. Put it that way. Tom, I liked this album before. There were times when I first started listening to this album and prep for this, that I'm like, was I fucking on crack? By the time I finished this album, it really moved up. Okay. For me, I don't find any skippable tracks on this. None. Oh, 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 wow. None. This is why I love doing this show. This is None. why I love this. None. And I don't say that about really any other kiss. I will leave Dangerous despite how being stupid it is. I will leave it on. So I can't wait to get these crazy rankings. So what we do, we rank the songs, 11 songs. What we do is we rank these 11 songs. You ready? Go for it. Go for it. Number 11, the horrendous, not skippable, but horrendous, 
dangerous. I cannot believe what planet I'm on right now. Wow. Too much travel. <laughs> well, no surprise. Number 11 for me is stand. I love it. Number 10 for me is another song I think is not bad. And that's all for the glory. Uh, number 10 for me is I'm an animal. Number nine for me is this is ridiculous. This is Kissel. <laughs> I should have put that clip in. Walk. <laughs> this this is, is ridiculous. I've got a song for you guys. It's called Russian Leg. It goes like this. This is Russian. Gene Poggles. <laughs> oh. Oh, Gene, this is ridiculous. Yep. This is ridiculous. Uh, number nine for me is All for the Glory. Number eight for me is Hot and Cold. Number eight for me is Russian Roulette. Number seven for me is... Never enough. Number seven for me is hot and cold. Number six for me is I'm an animal. It, that song flew up the charts for me. It really grew on me. I like the genie. Wow. It just sounds like. Arr. Number six for me is never enough. Number five for me is when lightning strikes. I love that song. Number five for me is dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Danger me, danger you, danger us. Yeah, but stand by my side. I'll be there for you when you need me. That's fucking way better. Just look over your shoulder. Yeah, okay. <laughs> fucking, it's like, it's like fucking like a Bible camp sing along song. <laughs> it's like, the, it's like, quote it's, that. you know what it is? It's like a fucking song like Ned Flanders' kids, <laughs> Rod and Todd, would sing in the fucking backyard. <laughs> All right. Number four for me is, yes, I know. Number four for me is when lightning strikes. All right. Number three for me, you're not going to like it. Modern day Delilah. I cannot believe you are going to have. Oh, God. <laughs> Number three is take him off, babe. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Eddie Pendergrass. You got, you got, you got what I need. <laughs> Listen to Eddie Murphy. Eddie does that in Cedric yep. Entertainer. I've seen one of his special. He does a great Teddy Pendergrass. If Teddy doesn't think you're listening, Teddy will holler at you. <laughs> Turn the lights. Off. He's like <laughs> unplugging everything, fucking unscrewing the light bulb. It's so fucking funny. Tom, number two is say yeah. I cannot believe you are going to have stand as the. the you know what? It's perfect. It's perfect because it shows you how fucking unlistenable this album is. <clears throat> number two for me is also say yeah. Uh, number one is the best song in this album, and that's Stand. Great okay, song. this is this is a shout it out loud cast first. My last song is your first. <laughs> yes, yeah, I, yeah. This is this is a shout it out loud cast album review episode first. You're amazing, and my number one is Modern Day Delilah. Yeah, I look at it as you picking this song as the least song and me picking the first, I think more people would agree that this is the best than that. This is the worst song on this album. Well, it sounds like we may have a poll for next <laughs> week's episode. We'll have to do two polls. <laughs> who's more crazy. Me which by making so, this which, number one or you making this last, which song sucks more. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tom, we're not done. Oh boy. Now we got to rank this versus all the other Kiss albums we have ranked. Okay. So let's go to album covers. Okay. Tom, want to read your album covers? All right. So we've reviewed 19 albums prior to this. So my rankings for album covers are from the bottom, Animalize, Crazy Nights, Monster, Asylum, Music from the Elder, Revenge, Hot in the Shade, Psycho Circus, Unmasked, Hotter Than Hell, Paul Stanley Solo, Kiss Debut, Dress to Kill, Ace Frehley Solo, Peter Chris Solo, Gene Simmons Solo, Creatures of the Night, Rock and Roll Over, and Love Gun. Now, this album cover is dreadful. It's, it's dreadful. Um, I mean, it does have the band on it with makeup, as opposed to some of the things that I have at the bottom here. So I'll give it a little bit of credit with that, but it, it's it's not good. 
I'm I'm gonna put it. I'm actually gonna put this below monster. I'm gonna put this at 18. Um, I mean, it's still got makeup on it, and it's but it's it's bad. So I've animalized Crazy Nights, then Sonic Boom. All right, Tom. Uh, for me, this is how I've ranked them uh, from 19 to number one. Animalize music from the elder, hot in the shade, unmasked, psycho circus, revenge, monster, crazy nights, hotter than hell, asylum, Paul Stanley solo, kiss, Ace Fraley solo, Peter Chris solo, creatures of the night, dress to kill, Gene Simmons solo, love gun, rock and roll over. I am putting this at number 15 under revenge, but above psycho circus. Okay. 15. Yep. Okay. So let's go to album ranks. Want to tell people how you've ranked your albums? Okay. So starting from the bottom at number 19, Monster, Peter Chris Solo, Music from the Elder, Psycho Circus, Animalize, Gene Simmons Solo, <laughs> Creatures of the Night, Ace Fraley Solo. Hotter Than Hell, Asylum, Crazy Nights, Hot in the Shade, Unmasked, Paul Stanley Solo, Rock and Roll Over, Kiss Debut, Revenge, Dress to Kill, Love Gun. Are we ringing a bell? <sighs> For <Look>, worse. <laughs> look, I, I want to get this out because this is this was a this was a very, very difficult week for me. <laughs> I have historically believed that Monster is the worst Kiss album because I don't spend a lot of time with Sonic Boom or Monster. So my mind just tells me that Monster sounds like shit and it's just not good because there's no standout tracks. And I always used to lean on Sonic Boom's, you know, modern day Delilah and say, yeah, and whatever. I can't believe what I'm about to do, but. I actually went through the exercise of listening to both albums in preparation for this. And I came away, I came away with the decision that monster is more enjoyable than Sonic boom for me. Oh, so horrendous is this? I know I, Sonic boom is at the bottom. I, I can't believe I never, I never imagined that this would happen when we started the review. Never, but spending all this time with this album, I, I just, uh, Tom, I feel I almost feel bad. Tom, you Go are ahead. the poster child for why Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons don't do another album. Thank you. <laughs> no, it's you my, are to blame. I'm the, I'm the poster <laughs> child for them doing shitty albums and me calling them out on it. <sighs> I can't, but I, I, honestly, if you told if you told me two years ago that when we review Sonic Boom, you'll have it at the bottom, I'd be like, no way. There's a ton of good songs on that album. Okay. Nope. And vice versa. I have, I have, I have been singing the song of Monster being the worst. For, I, I mean, it, it became a goof. And I mean, no, granted, there's a very fine line separating the two of them. But for me, I, just, we can't, I, I can't know. wait to at some point break down which is worse. That's going to be an episode. Sonic Boom Monster Fight. Oh, we're gonna we might have to do like the Chris Jericho album clash. I agree. Oh, Go ahead. God. All right. So, uh, what do I have for the 19 albums we reviewed uh, so far? Number 19 is Monster. 18 Unmasked. Then Gene Simmons, Psycho Circus, Animalize, Asylum. Ace Frehley, uh, music <laughs> from the elder, hot in the shade. Peter Chris at number ten. Nice, crazy nights, dressed to kill, hotter than hell. Paul Stanley solo, love gun, revenge, kiss, creatures of the night, rock and roll over. Uh, I've had my I... mind made up on this. I had a, I had to figure this out. I put this up against this album, song by song, and Sonic Boom won out. So obviously, it's not last. So. Where am I putting Sonic Boom? I am putting Sonic Boom at number 14. Wow. Ahead of Asylum, oh. ahead of Animalized, oh. ahead of Psycho Circus, ahead of Gene Simmons Solo, ahead of Unmasked, and ahead of Monster. 
You are telling me that you like Sonic Boom better than Asylum. Yes. I'm telling you. You know what? This is why I love doing this show. This is this is our this is my favorite album review episode I think we've ever done. Dude, wow. the album fucking's great. I can listen to all the songs except the one that you fucking like. Dangerous. I can't believe there is a world where someone likes Sonic Boom better than Asylum. If I took out Dangerous and put yep. the 10 songs up against Asylum, yeah. I'd pick Sonic Boom. I love it. I, hey, you know what? God, I, God, God tears God are play. falling as fucking gone thin to me. So as who wants to be lonely? And- save it. Save it. We will have Jericho on for some classic. We'll, we will do some Kiss album Dude, clashes. In addition to that, King of the Mountain is terrible. Fucking okay. horrendous. All right. Modern day Delilah wipes the floor with it. In addition to that, I would say, first of all, uh, to me, stand. Um, Say, yeah, modern day Delilah would be the best songs on Asylum. By far. Save that. Save that. When you pumped. take that, God bless Wes. When you take that horrendous song, what's that song that he wrote? Loves a Deadly Weapon. Thank you. That would be that, that would that would be one of the second or third best <laughs> songs on Sonic. That Boom. is one of the worst songs in the library. And then you add in Rain Off for Love. Oh man, dude, I would love. I would I, eleven Radar for Loves would be better than Sonic Boom. <laughs> I will take your horrendous, horrendous <laughs> title, Dangerous, over Love's a Deadly Weapon. I that song this. is horrendous. I love I'll this. take the quarantine version better than... I'm so I'm glad we waited this long to do Sonic Boom in, in, in SIOL history. Sonic gr- Boom! 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 I love Sonic it. Boom! I'm telling you, you know what's good? I'm, I can I am so looking forward to the feedback on this because i think there's a lot I, I think there's a lot of people like you out there and i think there's no. a lot of people like me out there no i i, I guarantee you i'm gonna get fucking destroyed there there's very few but there's a couple stand tards out there and a couple sonic boom tards but the majority is gonna be like you're fucking insane i think the biggest thing you're gonna take a beating on is ranking this higher than asylum that's like blasphemy to a lot oh, of people asylum oh, oh. yeah yeah Oh, yeah. What you need me? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Love's a deadly weapon. Oh, Don't forget goodness. about that fantastic I'm Alive. Oh, I actually like that song, though. Oh, I do, too. Yeah. I know. And Secretly Cruel's fantastic. Yep. So is um, uh, Any Way You Slice It. Yep. The three Paul singles are pretty good. Yep. It's a good album. They're all Kiss albums, people. I agree. They're that, all we, Kiss albums. That's the that's ultimate. To, yeah, I, I will listen to Monster before I would listen to fucking any of the Sonny Pooney fucking ARC albums he's picked. And I will say right now, Sonic Boom might be ranked last. There are four or five songs on there. I will seek out on that album. I mean, it's a like you saw, like you say, it's a Kiss album. Like the the Sonic Boom would be. Was, Sky high on our ARC <laughs> rankings, probably you, based on some of the wanna, fucking albums. Okay, do you put Sonic Boom above Bullet Boys debut? Oh, without a doubt, not even. Close. What about Bad English? Not even close. It's better what than every Poonies. It's he better than too. it's better than every Pony submission. It's not even close, except for maybe. Uh, oh, jeez. What <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. Peace of mind. No, no. Sonic Boom is better than Peace of Mind. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm, I'm being be- okay. Is oh. it better than this month's pick that he has? Um, I don't. So far, I don't mind this month's pick. Oh. I still got about three weeks to listen to it, but I don't. I, Sonic Boom is better. Yeah, if Sonic Boom is better. If you thought these songs were sophisticated, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. No hints. No hints. I don't want to slip. Yeah. His his new album that he's picked is for people that find. Uh, Fucking uh, pretty boy Floyd lyrics too sophisticated. <laughs> Save it. Oh man! All right, Tom. What we do next is we go to question of the week. Do you got one? We do. We're gonna make this fun and quick because album reviews take a lot out of us. This is an email that we got from Trent Bally. Would you rather listen to Ace fumble around on stage? <laughs> Or listen to Paul talk about his ear. 
I would rather watch Ace fuck around on stage because I I know there's going to be some fun in there. The Paul ear stuff, you're not supposed to laugh, but it's fucking tedious and repetitious. We don't need to hear it. I've heard the story a million times. God bless you, Paul. It was great reading about it in the book, but fuck it. Come on, dude. I just had to read it because I love the fact that these are our listeners with a question like that. Trent, it's fantastic. Of course, I'd listen to Ace because even if he fucks up and destroys himself on stage, it's still it's laughable. I don't want to hear it. Paul, like Zeus said, God, God bless Paul and what he went through. I, I don't want, I, I don't want to hear that anymore. I just don't want to. Uh, Ace don't, is on, don't touch it, this railing. Oh, <laughs> shit. Oh, gee. Wait, what are you guys talking about? What happened to Paul's here? I, I thought that was, I didn't really, I didn't even notice. Yeah, Paul's got that nose infection thing. He's got, <laughs> who knows? I remember I rhymed. Uh, great question, buddy. Tom, where can people find us? Yeah, so just to follow up on Trent's question of the week, if you want your question asked each week or as part of our upcoming mailbag episode, uh, you can start by going to our website, shoutoutloudcast.com. You can send us messages directly from there on the website, and that's the place you can get everything, all of our episodes, Shout Out Loudcast, Dome Damage, ARC, Zeppelin Chronicles, links to our Amazon shopping, links to our merch, links to all of our social media links, our Patreon links. Again, thank you, Patreons. And you can send us messages directly through the website. We receive them in the form of an email. Uh, or you can just use our regular email, which is shoutoutloudcast at gmail.com. Please, we read every email. Sometimes we might not be able to read them all on the show, but we do read every one of them, and Zeus and I talk about them all, all the time. Uh, and, of course, social media, Facebook, X, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, I don't even know if threads is a thing anymore, but whatever. Who knows? Uh, we're on all those, so please check us out. We're very active. Tag us. Take pictures. We got a fucking awesome picture right on today, Wednesday, September 6th, on Facebook of uh, a bunch of guys, all four of them wearing Ace Cult t-shirts, uh, and they tagged us. So thank you guys for that. That was friggin' fantastic. That's so that's so, so fun. We love seeing that kind of stuff, having a sense of humor, enjoying Kiss, and obviously listening to the show. So thank you for that. Um, and of course our Patreon again, we love you guys. Please check us out. And we're always proud to say that we are part of the Pantheon podcast network of music shows. Yeah. Please DM us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. We accept them and we read them. If we can, we'll get back to you, but we don't always get back to you, but we do look at them. Uh, please become a YouTube subscriber. And again, maybe if we had one of those interns, wink, wink, We'd be able to get some more of that video content we uh, we want to get out there. And give us one of those five-star child reviews on Apple Podcasts. That helps us out tremendously. How can you help the show? Patreon. Become a member. Go to our website. Go to... Uh, go to him. <laughs> go, go to our Amazon store. Go to our merch page on our Amazon store. All links right on our website, shoutitoutloudcast.com, shoutitoutloudcast.com. Big way to help the show. Then finally, you can always email us, uh, as Tom mentioned before, shoutitoutloudcast at gmail.com, shoutitoutloudcast at gmail.com. We always end on famous last words. Tom, do you got any? I don't want my candy sweet. You don't want your loving nice. Every time we meet, Wear like TNT, light the dynamite. That's right, baby. <laughs> Two down. parts trouble. We forgot about the best lyric. I don't know how we skipped this one. We were talking about this magical song. Two parts trouble, ready, steady, rough. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm alive in the street. Made of fire, made of heat. I'm an animal, and I'm free. I'm a fucking animal. I got legs like fucking tree trunks. <laughs> got I'm hamstrings like Arnold. <laughs> That's the Big Hawk Jerky Boys one. Find it online, guys. Find it online. Fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Big Hawk. <laughs> well, they call animal. you Big Big Cock? No, Big Hawk. <laughs> big Hawk. Oh, God. Tom. Kiss Army, Loudcasters, thank you. Guys, you're the best. Thank you so much. Boom Tards, I can't wait to hear your feedback on this one. Scan Tards. <laughs> Zeus, as always, my friend, thank you.
Peace out, Girl Scout. Tom, what we are going to do again is read some of our funny spam emails that we oh, get. Oh, this is one of my favorite segments. Go Haven't done it. this in a while. Okay. This one comes to us from Sexy Moms. Ooh. And the headline says, I love anal sex and blowjob. <laughs> I want your cock now. Look at my ass. Want to have sex tonight? Teens are looking for sex near to you. I'm so fucking horny. Eggplant and splash and tongue emoji. Next, we get something from Tess77386383. I don't know. 617-555-0850. What's the, uh, what's the what's this what's the subject Matt what's the subject line on this one Zeus? All right. This one says I am hungry for your dick. Please make me come hard tonight. <laughs> Snap. You got a message from Emma. Meet her tonight. <laughs> oh god. Next, oh. I've got an email from Free Porn. Let's meet and fuck. Don't make me wait more. I want to suck yours this night many times. Want to have sex tonight? Tom, I'll turn it over to you if you uh, can find some better ones. Okay, well, we got got some more from Sexy Moms, okay? (laughs) Uh, The subject is... I can't... (laughs) I can't wait to feel your hot cum (laughs) on my tits tonight. Let's fuck today. Want to have sex? Rich teens are looking for you. I'm so fucking horny waiting for you with my legs open. Text me and let's have fun tonight. Fuck for free. (laughs) Okay, I like this one. But why does she need it to be hot? Um, I like this one. Another one from Sexy Moms. <laughs> she's a anal. She's a, wait, wait. She's a frequent listener. To shout out loud, Dad. Anal or oral sex tonight? It's your choice, babe. Please fuck me tonight. I want you to fuck me hard. I love anal sex and blowjob. If you want to meet to fuck, just join for free. Look at my ass. <laughs> And then we end with one of the filthiest emails we've ever gotten. (laughs) This comes from a gentleman named Robert Rubio. And the subject heading is cello offer. (laughs) Greetings. (laughs) Rheumatoid arthritis. And ganglion cysts have disabled my left, (laughs) have disabled my left pinky. This affects my cello plague. So I'm attempting to give it to someone who will care for it. Do let me know if you need it or know someone. All the best, Robert R. Oh, my God. Dude, I'm, 
I thought that was Mark St. John. He's got a disabled pinky because he's got rheumatoid arthritis. I mean, my options are to help a guy with ganglion cysts or to, or to, or to, uh, have my hot cum go on sexy mom's tits. She loves fucking and blow job. One blow job. Not many. Just one blow job. Ah, oh, this stuff is the best.